Hello chemists and welcome to another episode of Bale's Chemistry. In this video, I'm going to be looking at Gibbs free energy graphs, which is an AQA specification 1.8 thermodynamics and appears on paper one of your final exams. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button down below to keep in touch with what's going on in the channel. So hopefully you're already familiar with calculating Gibbs free energy or delta G. If not, go back and check out my previous video on the topic. Here's a quick recap though. Free energy is used to calculate if a reaction is feasible. A delta G value of less than zero means that that reaction is feasible. It can be calculated using this equation. Now Gibbs free energy or delta G indicates the feasibility. Enthalpy change is the change in energy of the reaction. Temperature, remember, is always measured in Kelvin. And the entropy change is the measure of the disorder during the reaction. It can be useful to plot a graph of delta G against temperature. And this is one of those exam skills that you need to be able to do. And if we look at the decomposition of lithium carbonate, we can see that it has an enthalpy change of 226 kilojoules per mole and an entropy change of 162.8 joules per mole. Now we can use this data value to calculate a value for delta G at a standard temperature of 298 Kelvin. Now care must be taken here to ensure that both the delta H and delta S are in the same units and I've converted them both into joules for this equation. Now, as delta H and delta S are fixed values in this equation, it's also possible to generate a range of delta G values for a range of temperatures. And this data can then be plotted onto a graph. So we'll plot T onto the x-axis and delta G onto the y-axis. And this will plot a straight line. In an exam, you will usually be given the temperature data and the corresponding delta G or Gibbs free energy data. It's important to know what the data on the graph tells you so you can answer the questions. The gradient of your line, which can be worked out by dividing the change in y by the change in x, will give you the value of minus delta s. So to convert this into delta s, just change the sign. So a negative gradient, as seen here, will give a positive delta s, and a positive gradient will give a negative delta s. The y-intercept value is the enthalpy change for the reaction, often referred to as delta h. And the x-intercept is the temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible in a negative gradient, or unfeasible in a positive gradient. When we look at the values for enthalpy change and entropy change, you can predict the patterns in feasibility and the gradient of the line. I'm going to look at this in more detail in a later video, but for now it's worth noting that this positive enthalpy change, so an endothermic reaction, and a positive entropy change, so a reaction which increases disorder, is producing a negative gradient. Now, if we look at the production of ammonia, a slightly different example, where the enthalpy change is minus 46.2 kilojoules per mole, and the entropy change is minus 99.5 joules per mole, this data set can be plotted to give a positive gradient. Now, this is important as you might see either type of data giving a positive or a negative gradient in your exam. And you shouldn't be worried if the gradient is positive or negative, as long as it's a straight line. Now again, looking at the patterns of the data which gives this positive gradient, we have a negative enthalpy change, so this reaction is exothermic. We also have a negative entropy change, so the reaction decreases the disorder. And these two factors give a positive gradient. Now to summarize this episode, we're gonna plot temperature on the x-axis. We're always gonna plot delta G on the y-axis. The line that draws should be a straight line. Now in reading the data off the graph, the gradient is equal to minus delta S. The y-intercept is equal to delta H, and the x-intercept shows the temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. Thanks, chemists, for watching this Bales Chemistry video. More thermodynamics videos are up here, or click down here to subscribe. 